Good morning. Time for another Voluspa reading. Today we do 21 through 25. 21. The war I remember, the first in the world, when the gods with spears had smitten Golvik, and in the hall of Hur had burned her, three times burned and three times born, oft and again, yet ever she lives. 22. Haith, they named her, who sought their home, the wide-seeing witch, in magic wise, minds she bewitched, that were moved by her magic, to evil women, a joy she was. 23. On the host of his spear did Othin hurl, then in the world did far f- war first come, the wall that girdled the gods was broken. The field by the warlike wains was trodden. 24. Then sought the gods their assembly seats, the holy ones, and council held whether the gods should tribute give or to all alike should worship belong. 25. Then sought the gods their assembly seats, the holy ones, the council held to find who with venom the air had filled, or had given oath's bride to the giant's brood. 21. This follows stanza 20 in Rigas. In the house book version stanzas 25, 26, 27, 40, and 41 come between stanzas 20 and 21. Editors have attempted all sorts of rearrangements. The war the first war was that between the gods and Wains. The cult of the Wains, Vanir, seems to have originated among the seafaring folk of the Baltic and the southern shores of the North Sea, and to have spread thence into Norway in opposition to the worship of the older gods, hence the war. Finally, the two types of divinities were worshipped in common, hence the treaty which ended the war with the exchange of hostages. Chief among the Wains were North and his children, Freyr, Freya, all of whom became conspicuous among the gods. Beyond this, we know little of the Wains, who seem originally to have been water, water deities. I remember the manuscripts have she remembers, but the Volva is apparently still speaking of her own memories as in stanza 2, Golvig, Gold Might. Apparently the first of the Wains to come among the gods, her ill treatment being the immediate cause of the war, Mullenhoff maintains that Golvig is another name for Freya. Lines 5 through 6, one or both of them probably interpolated, seem to symbolize the refining of gold by fire, Hur, the High One, Uthin. 22. Shining One, a name often applied to wise women and prophetesses. The application of this stanza to Golvig is far from clear, though the reference may be to the footnote, page 11. Magic and destructive power of the gold. It is also possible that the stanza is an interpolation. Puke maintains that it applies to the vulva who is reciting the poem, and makes it the opening stanza, following it with stanzas 28 and 30, and then going on with stanza 1. The text of line 2 is obscure and has been variously amended. 23. The stanza and stanza 24 have been transposed from the order in the manuscripts, for the former describes the battle and the victory of the Wains, after which the gods took counsel, debating whether to pay tribute to the victors or to admit them, as was finally done, to equal rights of worship. 25. Possibly, as Finn Magnuson long ago suggested, there is something lost after stanza 24, but it was not the custom of the Eddic poets to supply transitions 
which their hearers could generally be counted to on to understand. The story referred to in stanzas 25 and 26, both quoted by Snorri, is that the rebuilding of Asgarth after its destruction by the Wains, the gods employed a giant as builder who demanded as reward the sun and moon and the goddess Freya for his wife. Everyone wants Freya for their wife. Everyone. The gods, terrified by the rapid progress of the work, forced Loki, who had advised the bargain, to delay the giant by a trick, so that the footnote, page 12, work was not finished in the stipulated time. <clears throat> How to get out of an oath? Call Loki. The enraged giant then threatened the gods, whereupon Thor slew him. Oath's bride, Freya. Of Oath little is known beyond the fact that Snorri refers to him as a man who went away on long journeys. That is the end for today. I will see you next time.